Okay, folks, welcome to Member Stock Chart Request. This is where we review the symbols that our gold members submit for me to review on video. And you may be asking, where have you been with your free videos? And folks, I've been busy, really busy. I have been doing videos for members, but we are completely gutting the website, changing the members area, adding a community. A lot of things going on, a lot of balls in the air right now. So uh, right now, membership is closed. I'm not taking new members right now. If you want to join at any point in time in the future, enter your email address on anywhere on the website. And we will notify people on the email list first before I go on video and put it out on a video that we're open or advertise or whatever we're going to do. I'm not sure yet. But anyway, enter your email address. You get first pick at the spot that's open, silver, gold. And we have a new bronze level that's coming out as well. And that's for you folks that either A, have a small balance, you're looking to check out the value of the contrarian trader, or if you're a macro investor and all you want is a higher level view of the markets, uh, I'll be coming out with the services involved with the bronze level. Not so much engagement, but you get your high-level view analysis of the overall markets. So let's get to the charts that were requested for me to review by my members. Let's go to let's go to IWM first because it gives us a glimpse of how the markets perform today. IWM is a concern to me. I don't like it. And you may be saying, what are you talking about? It, it, it's breaking out to new all-time highs, and it's doing so on volume. Folks, I don't like it. Why? This is ticky-tack trade. No conviction. Every day, there's a story when it moves higher. This day here, topping tail. This day here, hollow candlestick indecision. This day here. More topping action. Yesterday, topping action. Today, topping action. What you're seeing here are institutional sellers moving into the dumb money that's chasing it higher. I don't call the small investor that. That's what they call you and me. And take note that while we're putting in new highs, and you're going to see this all night long tonight on most of these charts, ultimate oscillator diverging putting in lower highs and this is not even the worst case i have i have divergences to show you on some of these charts that are going to blow your mind and these are on the uh big facebook amazon netflix google names and apple so iwm i would be okay if you wanted to open a short position a small one and then I would look to add on a fall and a breakdown below 143.90, which marked prior resistance and should now act as support. If that fails, that means IWM is going a lot lower. And I would imagine if IWM goes, you'll probably see uh, the NASDAQ comp down as well because the NASDAQ is not looking good. So IWM, be really careful here, folks. They're moving it up to all-time highs, but what they do when the markets are rolling over, you have weakness across the board in the NASDAQ names. Granted, the transports are holding up. What they'll do is they'll bid the junk stocks higher because they're heavily shorted. All the day trading money will rotate into the small cap arena and only to get clubbed over the head like a baby seal. So be very, very careful here. All is not what it seems. Amazon. We went short of Amazon last week. We booked profits. This week, we used a bear put spread. And I'm going to put a video together. If you want that video where I go over the trade review, just enter your email address anywhere on the website, and I'll send it out to you. And folks, I, I've asked twice already to enter your email address. Let me say this. Once you will not be spam. We have a no spam pledge. No spam. All right, so Amazon, we booked profits on our short yesterday. And what I'm expecting now is probably a continuation pullback to this 927 level, then a rally. And I think that rally will fail. And I think we're going to break 927. Why do I say that? It's because what you're seeing set up here is a head and shoulders pattern. Left shoulder, 
head, right shoulder. Depending upon what support level you want to use the neckline, you could argue that we've already broken the neckline. Being more conservative, let's use this as our neckline. So while I think that we're probably going to get a retest of the support level, we may rally off of it. I think that we fail to rally and close above 1,000 anytime soon. Apple. Okay, another stock. This is a weekly chart. The other charts have been daily charts. This is a weekly chart because there's a story to be had here. Apple, last week, let me update this chart. I'll be right back. Okay, Apple last week closed down below the rising band of this uptrend channel that began back in June. Now, this support level here is not the primary lower band of support. This is here at the, let's call it, 142 level. And it coincides with this support level here last seen back in June. Now, what I think is going to happen here is that while we've limped off the lows of the week, I think that we're eventually going to pull back and retest this lower band of support. Now, that could be a good buying opportunity depending upon how the market is holding up overall. But the good part about buying at this support level is that you have two great areas of support, which if they fail, act as great stop loss points. So if you buy at these support levels, you keep your loss very, very small. So that's the beauty of it. Now, what don't I like about this chart, besides the fact that we couldn't hold the support level last week? I don't like the fact that on RSI, we broke down. We were putting in higher highs on price. And I always talk about this with members. Watch out for your RSI and your Stokes in particular because they are forward-looking indicators. And we have a double top and a lower high on RSI, same thing on Stokes, and they did not confirm the new all-time high on Apple. That was a warning flag on the track. Same deal goes here, Stoke RSI, lower highs. Same deal here, ADX, lower highs. All over the place, MACD, lower highs. Head and shoulders set up on Williams percentage R. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. This is why you need to use the macro charts, the weekly and monthly charts, not just the daily and intraday charts. Get out of that habit. Now, if you take a look at the daily chart, you've had a nice bounce back off of last week's lows. This is not going to hold. This is a dead cat bounce. So I would not be a buyer of these shares right now. I think that the path of least resistance right now for Apple is to the downside. You can get another couple of up days here, but even take note of the rally today. We rallied, sellers moved in right at this resistance level. Stokes are hooking up, which is good. I would not be a buyer here. Too much bad stuff on, on the weekly charts that is very, very concerning, and the headline risk right now is not good with the iPhone 8. Okay, next chart up for fellow member Robert. Uh, Allergan. Okay, so Allergan is in a downtrend. The path of least resistance is down. Uh, we had a dead cat bounce. I think that today we probably saw the end of that dead cat bounce, bounce and the continuation breakdown will resume fairly soon. Now, what am I wrong about the path of least resistance being to the downside? Well, I it would help if Allergan could close above this upper band of the declining downtrend channel, or better yet, above resistance at 217.50. It doesn't look like it's going to do that anytime soon. Your RSI is in a downtrend, lower highs, lower lows, volume above average to the downside. I don't see anything good about this chart, unless, of course, you're looking to short it. If you're looking to short it, fine. Use a stop on a close above 217.50. Add to it on a breakdown below 205 to 201. Eventually, I think we're coming down to the November, December lows of 2016. Alibaba. Horrible. Uh, I only spoke about Alibaba a few weeks ago. It was looking good. And wow, the scenario here has changed dramatically now using the rsi you could see that we were making a new all-time high 
with RSI in a divergence. Never ever good if you're long. And today we close down below on a bearish key reversal below the lower band of the rising uptrend channel on volume, folks. This is not mom and pop selling 100 shares. This is Fidelity, Goldman. They're out there selling. Don't fight these guys. Take note of Ultimate Oscillator. I mentioned this earlier. You're seeing this a lot. Ultimate Oscillator, lower highs. It's been going on since May. Take a look at the run up since May, and you've had Ultimate Oscillator telling you, be very, very careful. Warning flag on the track. That's the market sending you a signal. Avoid these shares at all cost. XLU for fellow member Norris from Texas. I spoke to him yesterday. Great guy. Hey, Norris, great speaking with you yesterday. All right, so the utilities, this is a weekly chart. Uh, the utilities I follow quite closely because it's our canary in the coal mine for interest rates. As goes the 10-year yield, so goes inversely the XLU. Now, so far this week, we've seen a bit of weakness on the 10-year yield, therefore strength on the XLU. It's an inside week, meaning no new weekly low sequentially. That's a good thing. Now, if you wanted to buy it here, sure. Okay, it it held its rising 20-period moving average. It did not put in a new weekly low, as I mentioned before. But you need to use a stop loss right below last week's low. Now, I will warn you of this, is that as I've been warning about the other charts, you're seeing divergences here. We were putting in an all-time high, yet RSI was not confirming it. It put in a lower high. That's not good. So we don't want to talk about this in the rearview mirror three months from now, two months from now, about what you should have done. We want to talk real time here about what's going on. And we are seeing weakness on the indicators. When will this be negated? It'll be negated if we get a A, double bottom setup on RSI, and then we proceed higher. Or B, we just shoot up higher past the prior highs. And we do not break down to new weekly lows on price. Take note, another lower high here. So let's just be careful with the utilities. There's a lot of chatter. These Fed governors are talking a very, very big game about being hawkish on rates. They'll never, ever be able to do it because we just couldn't afford the interest payments. But these well-dressed thugs on Wall Street, they listen to every word that these Fed governors have to say, and they take it as gospel. So what are we going to do? We're going to fight it? We can't. So, Norris, uh, weekly chart, it's good on price. I'm concerned about the indicators. If you're going to buy it long, use a stop loss. I would even say below this week's low. Let's go to a daily chart real quick. Yeah, here's where you need to put your stop, right below 53.22 if you're looking to get long. And I wouldn't buy this unless we made a new daily high. And ideally, it closes above the 50-day moving average. If you need a rule to buy these shares. Buy it on a close above the 50-day moving average. And I would use a stop right below 53.22. Next chart up, GNRC for Ciroc. Generic Holdings weekly chart. This one has really gone parabolic. Uh, it's holding support above 44.84, which was prior resistance. Where do we close? Yeah, 45.02. We're holding the lower band of the rising uptrend channel. Uh, I think that we're, we're probably going to break here and get a pullback. This stock has gone so parabolic. Uh, I, I would wait personally until Friday afternoon. If, you, if you're going to be dead set, you need a rule on when you're going to buy this stock, I would wait until Friday afternoon, uh, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See how this thing looks poised to close. If it's holding above 45 Sure, you know, if you want to buy a few shares, use a stop right below the week's lows, fine. But I would not get overly aggressive because this stock has really gone parabolic. We're going to get a pullback soon. And if you take a look at the daily chart, look at this. All these topping tails, they signaled resistance above. We pulled back, rallied off of a bullish key reversal, lower high. So if we see a breakdown this week below 44.67, we're coming down 
to probably 4350, which will coincide with the rising 20 period moving average. I wouldn't be a buyer here. I, I would say avoid. In fact, let's do this. If you need a rules based approach, which I like, here's your rule. Let's get our crayon out. We have a triangle formation, which is a continuation pattern. All right, so it's pretty simple. If we break down below this lower band of support, you're not going to buy it, right? Because it's going to go a lot lower. If it rallies up and through and closes above this upper band of resistance, then you can open up a position. I wouldn't open up a large position. I'd want to see whether or not it spends three days consecutively above this upper band of resistance, but I would be a buyer on strength. But a caution flag is on the track here. Remember that weekly chart? And pay attention to the daily chart. We've gone parabolic. This is eerily reminiscent of shorts getting squeezed. But again, triangle formation, continuation pattern, buy the breakout, use a stop if we break back down into this trading range, and especially if you break down below this lower band of support. Next one for Ciroc, WBT, well built. Uh, this is a watch only. Why? Uh, it's because we are in a flag formation. We rallied today. We closed off the highs of the day. What does that imply? It implies that we have sellers above, probably the same guys who bought up here and that then got hammered. They're trying to get out of the remainder of their position. So these guys want their money back. So I would not be a buyer of these shares until A, we pulled back and retested the lower band of support. Or B, we broke out above this upper band of resistance. Volume is okay, but some of that was selling. That's how I would play well built. Halozyme Therapeutics, daily chart. All right, so we have a continuation pattern here, a triangle formation. It's simple. Uh, we buy the breakout, we buy on a close above this upper band of resistance. Use a stop if we drop back down into this trading range, and especially if we break down below this lower band of support. Keep in mind that RSI is a bit extended, and we're putting in lower highs now. It could be just because we're consolidating here. Don't read too much into it. Some of the greatest stocks have had their greatest moves with RSI above 70, but buy the breakout, and you want to make sure that it closes there, all right? And use a stop right below this lower band of support. Givo, this is for fellow member Anthony. All right, so I, I haven't even looked at the price yet. All right, the first thing that jumps out at me, we have Stokes below 50. Automatically, it's I don't buy it unless they are rounding up. Right now, we have a double top below 50. Yikes. Sure enough, take a look at your price. A big move higher. I don't know whether this is a pump and dump, what have you. I have no idea. But whoever was supporting it, they're supporting it no longer. And it could just be a micro cap name. These things happen. They rally. People who bought back here, wow, all of a sudden they got their money back. They're selling. They're not looking to make a profit. They've been sitting for months now with the stock doing absolutely nothing. They just want their money back. That's the psychology of the market. So would I be a buyer here? No, I would wait for a bullish key reversal on the day and ideally on volume. You did have some, some serious volume here. This is no joke on um, the 21st. I haven't checked the news. I'm going to presume there was news there. And you'd want to buy more after you get your bullish key reversal and you open up your position. You'd want to add more once you get these stokes hooking up and above the 50 level. But right now, I think the path of least resistance is to the downside. It's an interesting chart. I'll, I'll, get, I'll grant you that. Weekly chart. Let's take a look at it from a higher level view. All right, so a multi-week consolidation, multi-month consolidation. All right, so it, it just can't close above 78 cents per share, and that's critical. That's critical resistance. So I would, be, I would avoid these shares right now, Anthony. All right, the next chart up is for fellow member Rich. It was CLV 
you had listed in the um, the ticker cloud, but no symbol came up for CLV. So I believe that you're probably thinking about CLVS, which we booked profits on a while back. So I'm going to go over that one, Rich, just in case that's the one you wanted. Let me know if it's not, and we'll get the uh, correct symbol reviewed for you. All right, so CLVS, I, I'd have to say avoid it. A bearish key reversal today. We're putting in lower highs. Would I short it? It's such a volatile stock. No, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't buy these shares. I mean, I bought the shares back here on a breakout of this triangle formation. We did quite well. But right now, you have the exact opposite that's going on. You're not seeing breakouts. You're seeing the shares put in lower highs. And now, here's a resistance level. Let's call it 70 nine dollars per share i think that we could quite possibly break when will I, when will i change change my tune if we close above 79 dollars per share it really needs to close above that level i'd rather pay more to be right rather than buying here and hoping that i'm not wrong because right now this chart is saying it wants to go lower first solar rather surprising price action given the action on oil usually it trades in tandem with oil oil has been behaving well now i i wouldn't say it's all over for fslr uh given these really few ugly down days here uh, you did have two days once on the 15th the other on the 22nd where we broke out and then the next day we broke back down that's a breakout point failure or a bull trap that's bad stuff. That destroys confidence. So I think we're going to need to see more consolidation here. And these stokes hook up. The fact that they're trading down below 50 is not a welcoming sight. So I would say avoid these shares to the long side. Short them on a break below this support level. But only if oil is going down as well. Don't fight that correlation. And the last chart up for tonight is RTN for fellow member Ernie. All right, and this is Raytheon. Um, geez, what can you say about this chart? I mean, it just doesn't want to go down. It's a steady eddy. Uh, this is a weekly chart. But I will say this, is that you have RSI at 82.48. It hasn't been at these levels since way back here in, what year was this? 13? It's holding on to support. We just made a new all-time high last week. Now, here's the problem. Here's where things get a bit concerning for me. Volume. Volume's been very light, but it happens with Raytheon. It's a steady eddy. The other problem I have here is Ultimate Oscillator. I've mentioned this a bunch of times. We're seeing divergences on the indicators versus price. You'd want to see on a new all-time high... You'd want to see Ultimate Oscillator confirm the all-time high. But what has Ultimate Oscillator been doing? It's moving down. This is the market sending you a signal. What's the ADX line doing? Signal line's moving higher, but the green line is flatlining. It's got a lower highs getting put in. It's barely holding on to support. I wouldn't be a buyer here. I just can't buy it here. It's too far extended. We have divergences. Let's go to a daily chart. Here's another divergence. RSI diverging. Lower highs. Yet price is making higher highs. New all-time highs with RSI drifting down. No way am I buying these shares. Look at this mess. All this choppy action on Stoke RSI. Very extended on Stokes. These Stokes haven't been down below 20 since March, this stock is due for a correction. I would avoid it. And that being said, on a nice pullback, an orderly pullback, it's a steady eddy. It's probably going higher longer term. We can revisit it. But right now, I would avoid it. And that's it for tonight, folks. If you're not following me on StockTwits and Twitter, please do so. Leave a comment on whatever social media platform you're watching. That's my dog outside barking or whatever. And if you watch this on YouTube... That's Bear the Stock Dog. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment below. Everybody have a profitable trading day tomorrow. Be well.